Welcome to another episode of Compa Financial Therapy. I am Danny. And I am Mike, and we are your compadres with Financial Stories. How's it going? Good. How are you, Danny? Yeah. That's how I feel, too. <laughs> I just didn't want to say it. Did you get the big uh, weather this week, the rain? Oh, that major storm? Oh, yeah. Was... That major storm that rained for like six hours? It rained all day. Here? Oh, yeah. All over. Oh, they did some driving, yeah. I don't think it was that major as they were seeing. But in some places it was. You got some big, uh, you know, especially in San Francisco, it was like big floods and I stuff. I heard about that one. So, hey, we'll, we need the water so we can't complain. I hope they helped the drop, no? I doubt it. Not enough. Not it would enough. have to rain like that for like a month. That's true. But they were seeing, I think this year, there's supposed to be like big storms coming, but it'll still like dry. and. As long as they're big enough in the right places where we get the water that we need it. Because here, if it rains in LA area, it just goes to the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, it needs to snow at the... At the, at the at top the, of the... Yeah, top of mountains, Sierra, Colorado. Yeah. That's where we really need it. Make it happen. I wish I had the, 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 the magic ball or the... They don't have weather manipulation here? You no. Know, one I, time I read an article about somebody that had invented something, but then he died and he went with them. Huh. Did he die or they killed him? Because that usually uh, tends to happen when somebody... Somebody, yeah, the conspiracy theories, right? I think in Dubai they've done it, no? Where they have weather manipulation? They say it's too expensive, though, what they do. Oh. They say it gets too too expensive. It, you know, here they don't want to pay for that. Right. But may, maybe, who knows? Maybe people want the, the drought for a reason. It's a money maker. Yeah, money maker. Could be the next oil, you know? That's true. Anything in California is a money maker. Every Everything. single thing. Todo. Yeah. Except us at the bottom. Yeah. You got to be that one, what is it, top 1%? I'm almost there. But th but even then, uh, you know, you got Elon Musk that he gave it up with California. He left. He's going to uh, Texas? Texas, yeah. And they had a big order too. Did you hear about that? Oh, yes. That was uh, Hertz. from Hertz. They yeah. purchased 100 cars at, 100, at vehicles. full prices. Yeah. 100,000 vehicles. Was it 100,000? 100,000, yeah. 100,000 vehicles. I it was just 100 cars. Mm -mm. Oh, 100,000. 100, and that pushed their valuation over to a trillion, a trillion, yeah. a little over a trillion. Yeah, that's it. I wish I would have bought more stock. I bought stock, but I wish I would have bought more stock. I think it's that time. I think it went down a little bit after that. It's not uncommon nah, for them to it, go up. Below I saw it today it was at a thousand per share. So we started it. buying. I think it was at eighty dollars a share, or three hundred dollars a share, or something like that. And then it doubled, and yeah. When we started buying, it was at like seven hundred something, and now it's at. You were saying over a thousand? Yeah. Imagine about a, a thousand shares. You would have made millions on that. That's true. Somebody was telling me today, one of their friends, one of my friends, my coworkers, her boyfriend had uh, money in, in crypto, Shiba. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he withdrew or transferred it somewhere else. But the way it's going right now, she said, dude, if he would have kept it in there, he would have had $80,000. $80,000. Put a little movie on. It's the stock market. It's part of the game. See, you that's, that's can't time it. My recommendation, and I've told people, I, I live by this rule, is just leave it there. Don't touch it. You never know. Well, sometimes you do have to move. It depends on the companies. I mean, if you had stock in Sears, right now you want it out because Sears is going under. So, it would probably be worth nothing either way. So Maybe that one. But, it, yeah. I it depends on the companies. I don't think I've sold a stock yet. No. I've kept all my stocks. I haven't sold any. I think we sold one maybe two companies but most of them we kept and most of them are companies that are you know really popular like google apple see you sold those no no, no we kept those. oh you kept them okay. we kept those those are the the big ones right now yeah they've, they've grown so much so. that's what she said but um <laughs> yeah i would keep that one too i definitely keep that one yeah. tesla did you buy a what is it the uh, ribbon or what was the other one they told you the couple weeks ago yeah 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 the other uh, electric vehicle one yeah mm -hmm. No, I think that was coming out on Thanksgiving. No, no, it came out already. I bought some. Did it? Uh -huh. um, you do, sure? Do you recall the name of it? Uh, Lucid. Lucid. No, Lucid, yeah. You bought some of those? Yeah. I, I don't know how many I bought. It wasn't that expensive. Yeah. But the I other one. Go up a little bit. With the R. Oh, Ribbon? That one's not out yet. That one's around Thanksgiving no, this year. Okay, so keep keep keep. I'm looking up. at that one. Keep it's just a few open. weeks. Yeah. Just a few weeks. I want to make sure I buy that one because that one's supposed to be the, the higher end electric mm -hmm. vehicle one, right? See, I mean, you said you were gonna buy two cars. I would like to get another electric vehicle. No, uh, I got to confuse. I like to get the truck. I need a truck. The one with the R. What is it called? River. Rivian. Rivian. That one's gonna be like the Amazon one, right? They're the ones that, that are backing up 
Amazon with their electric trucks and stuff like that. I think so. Yeah. Lucid, I think, is a higher end electric vehicles. Yes. It's like, Lucid and yeah, Rivian. I forgot the other one. We'll get there's it a whole bunch now. See, yeah, there's a whole. Everybody's coming out with electric. You got, you know, Cadillac. You got everybody's coming out with electric cars now. Cadillac too. Mm-hmm. I saw one the other day in a commercial. Damn, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it's it's the the future. But um, I think who's gonna do the charging stations? That's where the probably the money's going to be. Invest money in that. Who's going to be doing those? I know Tesla's doing some, right? Tesla's doing one of those, and they're thinking of opening it up to a non-Tesla with a little higher fee. But then there's a company that's going out there that they're creating like these gas stations type of s- scenario where you pull up and they swap the batteries for you. And the batteries are, you know, you swap for charged batteries. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, that was That's pretty neat, though. I think it's a good concept because then you don't have to worry. The only thing is they have to set up like gas stations where, you know, you go and you swap. I don't swap think that thing. one's going to last. You don't, think, you don't think so? Because the issue with waterproofing, when you open up the battery, you're going to have that issue. But even if they put it in a, like a sealed where, it, you know, you can, I think. Depends on the d- technology, how they did it. Maybe. Yeah. Most cars are not going to go in the water anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's talking about uh, no waterproofing. I said like when you're raining and go through puddles and stuff. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it'll be a big issue. It depends on how they do it. Not in California with the drought, right? No, it rarely rains. They have two doors in it, seal it. And, I don't know. I think they could design around that. That's that issue. It's a matter of design. I don't know. I don't know. Like I think it's kind of cool. But how long would it take to do that? Like swapping out a battery? I think it takes. Uh, they said uh, fifteen twenty minutes. Okay. So. And to fully charge, like let's suppose, like your car, how long does that take? Well, right now, mm-hmm. um, with with it's almost to zero to fully charge at a high capacity place, it takes about if there's nobody there, about thirty to forty five minutes. Okay. If there's people there, then it takes about an hour. Oh crap! Okay, so the battery swap a little bit faster. The what? Half the time, battery swapping. Well, probably yeah, but because they're already charging the battery, you just go and get a refresh right. battery. Okay. We'll see. That's going to be, t- I mean, uh, that's the way of the future. See. Electric cars, electric trucks. So what's going to be the next like, one that's going to be the, the primary? Who knows? Hey, we got to invest in all of them, no? A little bit in all of them. Yeah. Get, your, yeah. get your fingers wet. I was reading, too, that LG is going <coughs> to pay Chevy for all the batteries, all the issues that they were having with the Volt batteries. Who? LG. Oh, really? Yeah. I think they're the ones that manufacture or do something with the batteries. Hmm. And don't for Chevy Volt, and don't they're gonna start paying like a lot of money back. Wow, a crap load of money. What she- Chevy had a uh, you know could have had a big lead with that EV car mm-hmm. that many years ago that they leased, and they just scrapped it. Did they? Yeah, Which they, one? Not the Volt, right? Another one? No, no. And it meant, uh, I think it was in the uh, early nineties. Uh huh. Yeah, they had a, an EV. It looked like almost like a a two seater. It was all almost kind of like a aerodynamic, uh-huh. and um, it was pretty popular. It's just that um, it was a lease; you couldn't buy it. Uh-huh. So after like a two-year period or three-year period, they got all the cars and scrapped the, the whole project. <laughs> and then Tesla came about a couple of years later. But yeah, they had they had the technology, they had the popularity already, and it just for some reason they didn't want to push it. Huh. They figured that their gas combustion engine was better my, to invest. Or maybe the government got involved. <laughs> you never know. T- today you're coming all very conspiracy theory today, well, man. Well, <laughs> have you seen... Um, I was watching what, did you, what did you watch? <laughs> I was watching a lot of stuff, you know. There's this guy that created a, a Waldi machine, right? Uh-huh. It runs off of water. Okay, I never heard about this one. Yeah, watch, check it out on you YouTube. Know, no, everything on YouTube is not real, right? It has to be real. I don't know. It has to be real. I mean, this guy puts water in his Waldi machine and he wilds and it, like efficiently. Well, but when you weld, you you use um, electricity, not. He's using water. So what is he using the water for? Um, to glue it to get. No, I don't know what the hell. It runs. It actually runs the whatever the engine. Also, represents. so he's basically created an engine that runs off water. There you go. And then remember back in. I, I think I've heard somebody create an engine that runs on water yeah. for cars. Yeah. And guess but who bought it? Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know who bought it? Yeah. The Should we say it or not? 
I don't know exactly who bought it, but yeah, it was. Uh, I'm in the debt if I say it. Uh, no. All right, fuck it. The government. I heard the government bought it back in like. My teacher told us back in 1990s that one, there was some guy that created a car that runs off of water. Mm-hmm. And since the government came, I think they bought it off him for like a million dollars. That's what he said. Well, same thing with the um, carburetor. Uh-huh. When, it, when somebody had invented the carburetor that basically you could use like minimum gas or something like that. And, and, but the petroleum companies were the ones that bought the technology and they shelved it. That's common. If you have the money. Competition. And it's going to kill your, your industry, wouldn't you do the same? I would. Yeah, I think anybody would, as, as, as a businessman. Right. kind of sucks for the world and for really the planet because, you know, that could have changed and made things better, but, you know, you need somebody like, like what Elon did, right. which, which, like, no, screw you, I'm going to do it and I'm going to prove you wrong. Now everybody's like, oh, oh we, we should do it. Now they're paying attention, right? Paying attention because really. people are getting into it. Yeah, that's true. Now, how he did it, I mean, that's a whole different he bought it. Huh? He bought Tesla. Well, no, he bought it, but the, I mean, how, why couldn't somebody else have done it, right. you know, over the years? Um, I don't know. He ain't in front of the government, that's for sure. He, he yeah, well, he, you know, he was criticizing the government because they didn't invite him to the electric vehicle. <laughs> uh, oh, what man. is it? The like their summit or whatever? Summit or something, they didn't invite him, like, well, because he didn't have but any like, unions. If you look at Tesla's financial books, they get a lot of government money. Like I think it's up until like a year ago that they they were barely paying back the the U.S. government back. Damn. I mean, I guess they have this love and hate relationship. We love you, but at the same time, we're not gonna show you in public or right, be right. with you yeah. in public. You know, yeah. behind the scenes, yeah. like hey, a side trick. As long as the stocks keep going up. That's all it talks. That's, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, talking about money, I mean, do you think Elon's happy? Oh, he's got to be happy. He has to be happy. I don't know. I mean, he's putting in, you know, 18 hours, sleeping in the factory. He went through divorce. Does it's he like really his see? third marriage. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah well, the first two marriage. were practice. Practice? Third one... I don't oh, know yeah. if your wife will agree with that. Well, she don't have to hear it. Yeah, have to hear it. <laughs> she don't have to hear it. She may be the first. She may be the last. I don't know. You don't know? You haven't figured it out? I haven't figured it out. I still got a couple more years. <laughs> She's on the lease right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, do you think there is a... Somebody asked me, you know, at what point will you be happy with the amount of money? Like, will a million dollars do it? Ten million? Fifty Kinda million? Adding to that... What I saw on the news today, adding to your Shibu Inu coin, uh-huh. I was reading that somebody last year in August of 2020, they invested $8,000 in the Shibu Inu. Right. Today, it's worth $3.58 billion. 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 So in about 400 days, someone went from, I don't know what, I'm pretty sure they weren't a billionaire, but they went to a billionaire. They are now, huh? So it's like, how how, did, how would that change? How would it change? Like, would I mean, that make you guys it. happier? Make it worse? Yeah. More money, more problems? Right, I, I think right, that. Right. I, I think a couple of things. I mean, first of all, you know, all the, all, everybody that hated you will come back, will come out and say, you're my best. Mijo. Mijo, I loved you. You know, I've always supported you. I knew you were going to make it. This was a test. Yeah. <laughs> that That's something that's going to happen. Uh, or hey, can you lend me money? Um, I think, from my personal experience, as you make more money, it does get lonelier. It does, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think it does get lonelier, especially if you don't make new friends that are in the equal, right? Uh, I guess wealth scale as you are, uh, because a lot of the friends or family, you know, they stay behind and then they'll. They're they like they're negative yeah, haters. Yeah, yeah. What do they call the haters? Right. Yeah, I see that. They see you different. They're like, oh, you're thinking dinero. I've, a couple of people have told me, like, oh, you've changed since you bought a house. It's like, how did I change? I mean, your priorities do change yeah, yeah. because now you could afford certain things. And yeah, I mean, if I'm going to go, you know, eat a steak at, what is it, see, at, at the, the local little place versus a nice steak, well, it's because I could afford the nice one yeah. now. And I think it's okay. But 
would a three billion dollars make you happier? I don't know. Because you do hear people up in that category where you know they they commit suicide and you know, but then there's some that are they they start using drugs and they go yeah. to that extreme. Why do you use drugs? One is the party, the the, the people start coming out like, hey, let's party, let's do this, let's do that, and then or, start or a way of getting out, right? See, because it's not always drugs; it's about party. Sometimes it's just releasing, escaping. you yeah. know, escaping, escaping some some kind of pain. Yeah, um, that goes the therapy part. That goes the therapy <laughs> part. Call me, I'll help you. Yes, they, and I've heard people too, like they win the lottery, and and they don't know how to manage their money, and they end up in a much worse situation within a couple of years, correct, than they were before they won the lottery. I mean, managing money, if you've never had money and you don't know how to manage it right. or, or try to learn how to manage it, yeah, it, it, it could be, it could be the worst thing. Yeah. yeah. I've seen something on on, uh, on the internet a few times where it says if you can't learn to manage $1,000, you're not all of a, all of a sudden going to learn to manage $10,000. Well, no. Yeah. Or even a million. Yeah. I mean, because it, it, and then be, besides just managing the day-to-day -day stuff, you got to be able to figure out a way to make that grow, and that's even right. a, a different way. Right. I always tell people, if you, if you come across, let's say you win the lottery or you come across to, uh, a lot of money, don't do anything for at least six months. Mm. What, what, what's behind that? Allow it to s sink in and really analyze what uh, you really need to do with the money or what you really want to do with the money. Because if you do it right immediately, you're going to be in this high, and then you're going to do foolish things. Right. You're going to go buy, you know. But people are impulsive. As soon as they get like, oh, shit, a lot of money, I'm gonna, let's buy something. Yeah. A, new, a new car, a new shoes. Well, that's typical Latino. I got a race. Let's, let's I'm going to go get the, the rims for my car. The new car, yeah. Or the new stereo system. But I think, you know, when it comes to items that are like wants, Right. Wait a little bit. See. Because sometimes that want could change in two weeks, a month. Or I've seen people that as soon as they get a promotion, oh, let me go buy a fucking car because now I'm at I could afford it. I could yeah. afford a, a higher payment. See. Rather than, you know what? I got a promotion. I'm going to take that. I don't invest that. Continue living the lifestyle. But then that investment could pay off big, especially, you know, that person who put it. 8000 8000 bucks. Now they're a billion dollars. That's crazy. Think about, I mean, think about it, $8,000. It is a lot of money. It is, it is. But at the same time, they were looking at this thing's going to go. Right. I think if you really believe in a product or a company that much, yeah, 8000 is a lot, a lot. But it, at the same time, it might be worth it. Right. It's a big gamble, it big is. risk. Yeah. The only way, personally, that I think people make money is taking risk. Exactly. Now, how much risk is willing to take, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. I was just talking to somebody about that too. We're uh, comparing returns, the rate of returns on our 401ks, and he's like, oh, I'm at a 17. I'm like, dude, mine just shot up to like 19.88. And then he said, well, you're much younger than I am too. You're able to take a higher Bigger risk than me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you're younger than 40, you could still take See? big risk. I mean, especially in the 20s. I mean, take take the big as risk. As much, yeah. As much risk as you can because once you get to your 50s and 60s, you should already like slow it down, slow it down a little bit. Still, still invest. I think, you know, like my father invested up to he, when he died. He was still investing. Shit. Good for you him. Know, he was in his 80s, late 70s, 80s when he passed away. But he was still investing. He see. bought real estate, and you know, you keep doing that. And I think I'll, I'll be doing the same thing. You know, hopefully leave that the rest to my family. You don't think at any point you're just gonna want to be like ah. Oh. Yes, the cruise control mode. No, I like the, the 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 challenge. I like the 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 uh, you know makes you something to think about. <laughs> what did you say? The control. The control. No, I don't think it's the control. But I, I think um, I, I think it, it keeps you busy. It keeps you has it gives you something to look forward to. Uh -huh. I think that's true. You know, that's true. But but it's not all about money. And I thought when I was younger, I thought like, shit, a million dollars, then I'll be fucking. And I've heard other, so who told me, somebody in my family recently told me like, if I only had a million dollars, a million dollars, all my problems would go away. And I was thinking like, damn, this girl's 22, like, fuck, what problems do you have that you need a million dollars to take care of? I didn't ask. I don't know if she's involved in some mafia shit. I was like, whatever, don't get me involved. I don't need to know. 
You know? Yeah, but on well, today's world, a million dollars is nothing. Yeah. I mean, you. she said 10 million, okay, maybe. But a million dollars is nothing. Yeah. And, I, and I kept thinking about that for a while. I'm like, dude, a million dollars? What the fuck does she... I mean, you give me a million dollars, I could do something with this. Yeah. Some damage, but I'm... It's not enough to where you say, oh, I could retire and live in... Well, maybe if you go to another country and, li and live, we can make it work. Mexico. Mexico, South America, somewhere. Let's see. Where the cost of living, you know... It's <laughs> completely different. Oh, yeah. You would, you would live a nice, comfortable lifestyle and never have to work. But you have to do something, though. I think I can't see myself just not, not doing, doing, you know, doing anything. I did, I did nothing for two months. Shh, I was going crazy. I wasn't working, but I was taking care of the family. I was laid off. It was like an in-between jobs. I was going crazy at home, dude. Yeah. So for retirement, I already picture, told myself, like, dude, I think you're going to have to prepare for this retirement. Right. And like, That's however. the biggest. Yeah. Uh, uh, people that I know that retire and retire early says you got to find something to do before you, you retire. Otherwise, you have to. You go nuts. You start getting ill because you start just sitting on the couch doing nothing. And you get sick and then you die. Yeah. I had I met this guy, this guy one time. He worked. Um, I was working at this company as a contractor. This guy had been working for that company sixty seven years. I think he started when he was uh seventeen or eighteen. He's like, and he he would say he's like, I don't want to retire because if I retire, I'm gonna die. Because people that retire, mm -hmm. they don't move. They're not as 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 active. They live a sedentary lifestyle. And he's like, no. Nope. Yeah. I think he finally retired after like closer to seventy years. I think. But then he with the company fi figure something else to do. I don't know. I, I think you got to find something. I mean, I'm, be a, a Walmart greeter at least. Do something. Stay I mean, busy. Volunteer. Stay busy. Keep your mind active. Volunteer. Yeah. I think that's that's key. Or, and then there's people that I mean, they get depressed. Mm -hmm. Suicide rate goes up también. Well, yeah. think about it. You know, you're used to going to work. You're uh, interacting with people, and if you own your own business, you're interacting with customers. Right. Uh, so there's always that interaction with. With, with the others yeah. um, I know after the COVID thing I mean yeah being home I mean I love my family but you could on, almost only say a certain amount of things See. so many times before like we already talked about that right <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's difficult yeah. at least when you go out and talk to others you can make some right. bullshit talk and at least you're talking yeah I agree, I, and I think we're, especially since we're social beings, we have to continue socializing, right. talking to people, interacting. So I don't think money is the key to happiness. I think it's a combination with that, being with your relationships with others. Right. I think that's important. I think the other thing that's important is, you know, job satisfaction. Right. Because you can make- All the money in the world, huh? All the money in the world, and if you hate your job, you can be miserable. Yeah. So how do you find that balance? You know, I was reading an article uh, that I think Purdue University did not Jeez. too long ago. They say that ninety-five thousand dollars per individual is the ideal amount of money that someone should make, and you'll be happy. To be. And I was thinking, is that is that true? If you with ninety-five thousand dollars, is that going to give you enough happiness right. for an individual? If a couple, what two hundred thousand or one hundred ninety thousand? Do you think that's true? I don't think, just that factor alone, I don't think it is. Why? Here's why. So I had a professor that was telling me that one of his friends, he, the professor was a judge, or former judge, retired judge, I forgot. His friend is a judge, made $20,000 a month. That's what, over 200, two, okay, the one, over 240000 a year? That seems... Like, damn, like, I say, I can, I, yeah, everybody says, oh, I make that much, I'll, I'm set. Yeah, but, but he'd spend 25000 a month. So then there's that other component of how to manage your money, how to deal with it. Well, I don't know what he was doing with, with Yeah, I know money. a lot of people that they made a lot of money per month, but then, yeah, they spend more than, than and they're, and they're in debt yeah. like crazy. So it doesn't mean you make more money. It could be more problems because yeah. now I say like, oh, I'm going to buy more expensive cars, more expensive toys. Really, I mean, so are toys the key to success or happiness? I want some toys. Everybody wants toys, I but want some toys. everybody at what point, you know, is it enough? One yacht, two yachts, a Ferrari. Where do you say like, oh, no, not a Ferrari, not a yacht. I want some quads. Some quads. I and mean, a trailer. A trailer. Something <laughs> simple. Nothing too crazy. That's that's 
That's doable. That's just a yeah, yeah, that's Anybody could do that. I'm trying to stick with within my means. Ferrari? Nah. You don't want to fly private? Fly private? I don't even like to fly, man. I'm afraid of flying. I don't know about flying private. A lot of those private planes fall. They crash, right? Yeah. Ahí está la Jenny Rivera. Pobrecita. Jenny Rivera, Richie Valens. Richie Valens. Mm. Uh, yeah. I don't know. There was that CEO that the whole company were, were coming to an event and then the whole company. See, 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 see. So, I don't know. I'm about to yeah, it sounds it sounds cool when flying private, but I don't know. Yeah, because I don't think they have the same maintenance requirements, right? And all the same. Well, they do, stuff. but it's yeah. only one engine. Or they manufacture one engine versus you know a big it's two see. three engines, and on a big plane you could still fly with one with one engine. Engine, yeah. yeah. You got one engine, you have no engine weren't working. <laughs> you you know. better hope those wings start flapping. Huh? Exactly, <laughs> like a freaking bird. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, that's a that's a big. Uh, but a, a, a billion dollars would, I don't know. Do you think Elon's happy? I think he is. Do you think the money makes him happy or his achievement that he's, that he's being able to do like, oh, I was successful. I got this company from zero to now where it's at now, a trillion dollar company. Right. I got a rocket up in space. Is that what's making him happy or is it the money that's making him happy? I think everything, maybe a combination of everything. I think the money to him is like, well, fuck, he's got a lot of money, so it's like, dude, a drop in the bucket for the rest. Yeah. For him, for us, it's like, oh, shit, that's a ton of money. But for him, everything that's creating, trying to pave the way for everything else, setting stuff up in space, the rockets. I was watching them in this this, um, this documentary on Netflix, and they were, they were saying that he was the one that created a reusable capsule, right? Mm -hmm. Versus everybody else that was... Re dumping them elsewhere yeah. and they were exploding because yeah. but he's the one that created that plan or that idea to keep creating so I think a lot of things that he's achieving are making him happy but you know going back when growing up in the hood you know I had friends you know they, they did a little bit of drug dealing and stuff like that See. you know they make good money but yet they still didn't seem to be satisfied at what point is it is it enough I mean you could be making two million dollars a day and yet still not happy right you know what? It, what is? Why is that? I mean, psychologically, why do people want more money, and what drives them to want more money? So I think a lot of it too with those people that are involved in that type of lifestyle. Because I work with a lot of those guys, not the drug dealers. Um, they're middlemen. I'm just kidding. No, I work with a lot of people that are criminal, uh, criminal mentality, very impulsive, very impulsive. So they're they're your um, ¿Cómo se llama? Doing stuff on the spot, not thinking about consequences, not thinking about the future. These are your adrenaline junkies. So, so it's the adrenaline that keeps them in the business. A lot of them, yeah. So entonces they constantly want more. Imas, Imas, what's next? And once they, like, the, the, doing the same thing, the adrenaline is not the same rush. So then they got to go find something else that brings them Something adrenaline. bigger, something more. Something bigger, daring. better, riskier. Crazy stuff like that. Yeah. G going into the happiness, like for millionaires and billionaires, I think a lot of people don't, Realize is the amount of work that they put, right? So they like they might not know their kids, yeah, but yeah. they have a lot of money in the bank. Does that contribute to the happiness? Maybe they didn't like. I don't like my family, or just the success, right? Because some of them are there, like, I work eight uh, eight days a week, right, 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 and twenty five hours, eight days you know, a week. Only you know, <laughs> they're, they're constantly days. working. <laughs> the equivalent, but um. I, I, I think you gotta have a balance. I mean, because I think, for, especially if you have kids, kids, uh, you know, if, if you miss your kids' important events, yeah. you're gonna regret it down the line. Yeah. So at, at the time, you're gonna be happy making, working all these hours because you're accomplishing your goals. But at the same time, you know, you're missing out on the things you'll never get back. Right. You know, Personally, for me, you know, my family came first, making money came second, the money came, kept coming in. Right. Um, I don't know, but that's me. I don't know how you feel about that. Well, I'm thinking about it. I'm seeing it from the kid's perspective, right? Now it's like some resentment. Mm -hmm. Dad's not there. He's so busy with work. and Or, but he, he might be busy with work, but maybe you get whatever toy you want for the day. You know, th does that help or does that make... You know, um, I don't think the toys. I mean, the toys will give them a little bit of satisfaction, but 
I think the time will be more important. From my personal experience, even if you never bought your kids toys, but if you gave them the time just to go play out, right. Heidi could see it or, you know, dodge bar, whatever, whatever you could play that doesn't require money, right. the kid will be much more happier. I think so too, especially with the quality versus the quality. quantity of time. Mm -hmm. So quality, there's been times my son's like, hey dad, for Christmas I want a, a Gucci sweater. I'm like, why? So why, why do you want it? Oh, because uh, it's cool. So I looked at him. I'm like, look, son, you're going to wear this, and then you're going to fuck it up. You're going to dirty it, stain it, and then there goes that. He's like, yeah, but I want one. Never got him one. Instead, I'd, I, personally, I would rather play with him mm -hmm. than buy him that. I can buy Can I buy him? Of course. Does yeah. he want but two, three, four? Look, I say, yeah. But what would you be teaching him in that lesson? Exactly. Is that materialistic things are more important than and anything spending else, time right? with them. Yeah. For me personally, I'd rather spend time with them. A lot of the people that I work with, a lot of the clients that I work with, don't have an involved, uh, didn't have an involved father, yeah, especially or father, or an involved uh, parent, yeah. mm -hmm. or, or some kind of parent figure. And they're... I think it's important. I yeah. think I think in the upbringing of kids, you gotta have, be involved in their yeah. lives. You have to. Um, otherwise, yeah. You, know, you have you, to be. Do you remember the case of um, a couple years back, there was this guy who was driving, got a DUI, killed, I think, four people in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And there was, I think, a psychologist coined the term oh. affluenza. Yes. His parents were too rich to yeah. teach him right from right wrong. I don't agree with that. You don't think so? No. But again. Because, I mean, no matter how rich you are, that's just common sense. You know, you killed somebody, you're going to do this, you're going to have consequences. Right. So, I mean, I think that was just a, a w they couldn't have a defense. That was just, I mean, smart for the lawyer, si. but I think it was the wrong. But if defense. you're going to use that defense, can't you use for a poor person that, like, he I'm too poor, he my parents be, were working right? all the time? I'm too poor that I was hungry, I, I stole. Right, right. You would think it's the same thing. Because you would think, but society doesn't treat si. uh, the raza and, and a, you know, a fluent white person, because this was white, right? Right. The same. You, you know, you could. It's been documented in many articles that, you know, when you get pulled over, the white, mm. brown, black, they don't treat, treat us the same. Yeah, you know, at least from my experience growing right. up in the barrio, you yeah. know, you got pulled over a lot. For what? Oh, we just some just. we had a complaint. Somebody that looked like you driving while brown. What? Well, exactly. I've had, and I've had that happen several a couple times. I I shit you not. Twice within 24 hours. Really? I got pulled over twice. This was back in Was it like, you had a lowrider or something? No. Do you know what I had? Um, uh, Toyota Camry. And they pulled over? They that? pulled me over. Why? So, at the time I was in the, in the Marines. I was bald. Uh, in Cholito. The Marines. Cholito. And then my friend, who was also in the Marine, two of them were in the Marines. One of them is a uh, Dominican Republic. He's from the Dominican Republic. Medio Short Medito. hair. A little bit dark. Okay. And then my friend, who was also in the Marines, black, and he wore, at the oh. time, academics was his so the you, brand. You needed to have the white di guy in your team. We were missing the white guy, yeah. So we had a Hispanic, and Moreno, we needed a white. Yeah. Entonces, I'm driving by the city, I get pulled over, and the cop's like, he pulls me out, and he's searching me. He's like, you know why I pulled you over, Holmes? And I'm like, what the you fuck? He said, Holmes, hey, I'm not Holmes. So I'm, not, I'm just going along, I'm like, no, I don't know why he pulled me over. He's like, yeah, Holmes. I was like, okay, weirdo. So he puts me in the back of the cop car, handcuffed, and he pulled out the other guys, and he's like, where are you guys headed? Where do you pick you up from? He's like, what do you, my friend, he's from, uh, I think he's from New York. He's like, he didn't understand what the fuck. He's like, what do you mean, where do you pick me up from? He's like, yeah, where do you pick you up from? He's like, he picked me up from Camp Pendleton. Well, he thought that you were prostitute. Uh, like drug dealing drug, or something. Oh, drug dealing. Probably prostitute. Yeah. <laughs> you probably saw me doing something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like where did you pick him up from? Like probably saw me going I, I took it the other way, not drug dealing. <laughs> like oh, that's his sugar daddy. Yeah. You're the pimp. <laughs> yeah, or maybe they were pimping me. I'm no. driving. Yeah, entonces he um, he's like, oh, you guys in the Marines? He's like, yeah, we're in the Marines. So he comes out, gets me from the car. He's like, you guys in the Marines? I'm like, yeah. He's like, why don't you tell me? I'm like, I don't see what difference it would have made. He's like, well, the reason you know what happened earlier today there was a gang shooting. I'm like, no, I just came from Camp Pendleton. I don't know what's going on here. He's like. There was a shooting, some rival gangs, and you guys fit the description of the what, shooters. Black and brown? Black and brown, I guess so. We were united that day. <laughs> that same day, I'm driving in a different city, 
I get pulled over again. And the guy's like, you know why I pulled you over? I said, no, I don't. He's like, you're driving the number one stolen vehicle in America, and there was a stolen car that fits your description. There was a stolen car that day that fit you. So did you get rid of that car? Eventually? I yeah, guess. eventually I got rid yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it happens. It's sad because this two days, and you know, this week, I think City of Beverly Hills was getting sued for uh, stopping uh, black people. Huh. And um, more than more than any other uh, ethnicity. Huh. It sucks. I, you know, I, 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 people say, oh, you know, it doesn't happen. No, it's, it happens. See, see, it does. You know, I, I know I've had the debate with uh, my wife. We're like, no, I've never seen that. And I go, no, I've seen it yeah. personally. Yeah. I think you've seen it too. I've personally. Seen, I've I think male, male Hispanics in the barrio, in certain neighborhoods, you get pulled over, you get stopped. What are you doing? It's typical. See. We just have to learn to live with it. Sadly. You know, eventually it'll change, I think. As you get more Latino cops and black cops in the force, but I don't know. Yeah. Then, then they form the gangs and the thing, and that becomes a whole different. There's thing. no gangs in the police department. <laughs> Isn't that the other thing in the big news? What? Uh, no, gangs? They, they, they yeah, like, us Latinos are gonna make gangs no matter what. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have little cliques, and <laughs> yeah. I think what things would change as more Latinos become professionals and they have more money in the bank and they have more. But then again, that then they start. Look at the city council, you know, the Latino city council, and then the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. really Thomas, where they both gotten, they're getting indicted for, for what is it, for uh, fraud charges. Fraud charges and um, mail. Mm, oh, I think there's some mail fraud, electronic fraud, and bribe, contracts. bribes, and yeah, it's all, all, all the bad stuff that you hear in third world countries. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. It's right is here. it in the blood? Is that whatever it is? That here's, is here's what I think. All right, so, and this is this is my theory, and this is what I think happened. Individuals like that, that have the mentality like, hey, want to be corrupt or whatever, they look for places that they can get into to take care of situations like that, right? So they want money. But do, do they really think they go in like, I'm going to go become a city council to become corrupt? Some, yes. But not thinking corrupt, think so. I'm going to take money. So let me give you an example. This is going to be harsh, but I think it drives it home. A lot of these priests that were molesting kids, right? He got quiet here. Well, well, hey. just, come on. <laughs> Go on with your story, motherfucker. So, tell, me, tell me your personal story with the priest. Well, <laughs> let me tell you what happened. I didn't enjoy it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what happened was, I think what happens is, I don't think they became priests. I think they became priests to have access to children. You think they became priests to have access to children? Right. They didn't, you don't think they became priests to... And then, and then decided to... I don't think they did. I don't think they did. I think if you want access... You think to all of them are like that? Or the yeah, majority of them? I think a majority of them. A large portion of them did. So you think that's kind of uh, messed up because you're saying, oh, you know, the, the mentality of a priest, like, I, I can't get access to kids, so I'm going to become a, a, a priest to do this. That, no, that no. Why could, they could have been a uh, what do you, daycare, same thing. True. But how, how often do you see males in a daycare? You do see them, and when then the when you see them in the news, is they're always not often. The kids. Yeah, <laughs> maybe like one, but you go somewhere donde hay, and you can blend in. Not that I've practiced this or anything like that, but you know. But you blend in. That's you a have good, access. good theory, but I don't. Know, I don't know if they. I think what happens is, one is because they have this, uh, you know, that they can't have uh, relationships and stuff like that, and they spend a lot of time with kids and you know people that are hurting. And eventually, I think they just f fall prey to like, oh, so? yeah, I think it falls like, hmm, you know, the ugliest person in the world will start looking really nice if you're the only, uh, you're, <laughs> you're the only two in an island. But, but why children versus an adult? Because maybe they tried to pick up on the wives or the people that the adults and they say no. And the next best thing is children. I don't know. Well, so when you're mentioning it, I'm thinking, all right, <sighs> there's women out there mm -hmm. that would like to be with men and vice versa, men that would like to be with women of status. Correct. Right. So the example I can give you is like, how often would somebody be able to have sex or a relationship with somebody like a priest or a nun? Would teachers fall into that? With so like yeah, the the, some of the teachers? women or even men 
having relationships with their students. Well, there right. was that one in Miramonte many years ago. In the yeah, hood, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where that, that guy was a teacher, and he had been in the business for years, and he was molesting those kids. So, yeah. you, you're, so your theory is that he got into the, the teaching because he wanted to get access to those kids. Could be for the access, yeah. So you have access to children. So I mean, that's going to be very controversial. You're going you're gonna to see a, a lot of people. So you're saying every male teacher that is in an elementary school they have bad intentions or every male coach who don't have kids and is coaching it that's i think you're throwing stuff. too big of a blanket on that i don't I, I, there's but that's no what i mean that's what you, i'm taking it no, no 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 i'm, I'm not saying i'm not saying every single one i'm saying the ones that are perpetrators look for the axis maintenance so the ones that were trying to so let me tell you i work with sex offenders and a lot of times they like to hide they hide amongst us. Well, well, amongst yeah, us. of course. I mean, so the ones that I think, the priests that were majority of them that were doing it, I think were going into that, the whatever the sainthood or whatever, to have access to children, right? And they're hiding. You wouldn't expect it from. That's kind of fucked up to think that somebody could literally plan this out. Like, who? I want access to children. I'm going to go into this profession. That is fucked up. It is a fucked up mentality. Wow, that's. I mean, you, I, I must be naive, there, but there, there, <laughs> there are people that actually probably did want to do it, but they, I think they're mixed in with the cards and shuffled mm -hmm. up until they actually do something. Mm -hmm. I don't think you, there's no full blanket of anything. No, not all Latinos are Republican. Not all right. Latinos are Democrat. You kind of I guess not everybody we fits in a specific a lot. bubble. Yeah, we always stereotype yeah. people. And I know there was a damn. I, I read an article recently too overseas in some other country. There was a lot of allegations of. of priests molesting kids that they hid under the under the the carpet yeah but because it's all about money you know so the the, the church makes yeah. a lot of money and they don't want to they can't be losing money either because they're losing money but yeah. they are losing a lot of parishioners especially after COVID. are they yeah it was a big report on that that they lost a lot of parishioners especially the catholic uh due to one is because of the pandemic and then after that people said yeah i really don't need need religion oh interesting i mean i don't know if the that's but gonna that's make a difference. Statistically, within the last like twenty years, the younger generation has yeah less been less, less religious, less, been less, less involved. people are becoming less religious. But but the pandemic did do damage. Push it over. Push it over. Hmm. I can look into yeah. that one. But I think we're getting off the subject. So you know our subject was you know money and happiness. Uh, not molesters and children and priests. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, it's a bit. I don't want to say it's a business, but we're talking well, about. Well, the priest is happy, you know, but you know the ones the that parents are, are not happy. Yeah, and all the money. But I mean, I think there's a lot of fucked up people in the world. I mean, right. You heard about those kids in the high school just the other day in Hamilton High School here in L.A. Uh, three kids or four kids uh, basically ganged up on a on a on a girl in the bathroom. I thought I heard something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, kids, you know, really? Well, I remember growing up, you know, we did bad stuff, but never like, wow, let's go get this, you know. Yeah, yeah, We Where is it the, the, the technology? Is it what's changing in society that puts this mentality or this mindset in, in these people? Good question. I don't know. I think it's a couple of things. Availability, like social media, like you didn't see. Well, I think social media kind of makes a lot of uh, things um, less impactful. I think, like you see somebody get shot, oh, okay. it, it's almost like a movie, but reality could be a real thing. Right, right. I think desensitizes. Desens people. That's the what I'm looking for. Yeah, it desensitizes people, and I think that of what's where people like, hey, you know, what's the big deal? You know, right. we're gonna do this to and that and then it was what is it usc same thing they were drugging the girls like yeah hey, no big deal i remember that one so it just fucked up society it is i'm gonna have you come in see our clients the ones who work with the sex offenders no they what? might want to take advantage of me let me see <clears throat> si me sale una gordota? No, mejor no. no we work with all guys <laughs> all guys menos <laughs> female <laughs> You don't have to think about it, man. I'm not going to go. No, I'm thinking about the ones that, that I work with right now, <laughs> who their their targets are. Yeah. It's not adults. Yeah. It's not um, adults. Yeah. So when you, yeah, we'll talk, that's a whole different topic. That's a whole, what, what about a happiness? <laughs> I think we're going to come back to that. So what would you be happy with? How much money? 
what would I be happy with? So I, I'm going to take into account my bills. So let's what, say you had no bills. The mortgage? Shit. Let's say you... Well, you, how much you, money? you won, or not won, you invested a 8000 in your year of $5.3 billion. What would that do in the, to your in the bank? Damn, that's a lot. Would you still live in the same house or you say, fuck it, I'm leaving? Still how have the same wife? Same, same kids? Bye. Uh, or I would probably... So, okay, let's talk about the wife here's first. My I'm theory. interested in that one. Here's, here's my theory <laughs> that, I, that I... I married in California. Uh, Catch my drift? So community property. Well, what I'm trying to get at is I'm married in California. I'm not married in Vegas or Nevada or in Mexico or Canada. No, it, 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 it goes throughout all the states, dude. That's what my wife said, too. But I'm like, look, I married you in California. My, certi- my marriage certificate says California. But you're married. I think all the states... Uh, Do they? You, you got to go talk to an attorney about this. But yeah. All right. So I would hire an attorney with that money that I made, right? Maybe if you go to where they allow polygamy, it's a whole different story. Like Utah and all those? Yeah. Or your, or your idea is... If there's a notion, you're not married no more. <laughs> there's boundaries, right? Okay. <laughs> so, um, hey. I don't think your wife would be with you, but speaking of boundaries, I like a few of those. So, forgive me. So you so that okay? So we already know that you make a billion bucks, you're gonna get a new wife in another state, one in every state. I gotta buy a house too. Oh. And buy each one. Of, so you're gonna have fifty wives. See. Si. And fifty houses and fifty. Plus states. the um, U.S. properties or territories. Your territories. Oh, okay. Those other, yeah. like Guam and whatever yeah. the hell the other ones are, Puerto Rico. Yeah. So like fifty-two. 52. So when? It, uh, well, I guess you see one every week, but fifty-two weeks. Uh, a lot of travel. Or would a billion dollars make you happy? Let's say you have no bills, you have no mortgage, you have no. What's all? You have cash. What's all conceptual? Because we don't have a billion dollars. I mean. W- or like, what number would you think would make you guys happy? No. Now, like, okay. I'm going to work every day until I reach that number. And then after that, you know what? I'm going to dial it back. I want to retire. I want to. I think for me personally, not having to worry to pay for medical Mm -hmm. if I need it. Not having to worry if I need food, shelter, and a little bit to to entertain myself. Meaning travel or something like that. I think that will make me happy. Because... Is a billion a dollars, a, a number. Is there a number attached to that or no? Because at a billion dollars, you can open up your own hospital, have your own doctor 24-7. Be like Michael Jackson where... Like that. Yeah. Is, yeah. No, you have your put me to sleep real quick. You put me to sleep too much. <laughs> no. That didn't go very well for him, so I don't think I'll do that. Why are you sleeping well? Um, enough that if there is some medical emergency that I could cover it, I think that would be ideal. Enough to where that mo- money is not a a thing that r- controls my life or make decisions for my life. I think that's where because you know once once you get to make a certain amount, money starts controlling you. Think so? Yeah, because let's say you have a billion dollars. So now you're, made you have to, you're made out of money because somebody just said you like to control. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it. It gets to a point where where money you have to start manage because if you're not gonna have the money just sitting in the bank. I mean that's no no fool's gonna do that and with a billion dollars. You're gonna invest mm. it in something. I was like you have to answer to people. You like let's say Jeff Bezos, you have to answer to the board, you have to to the to, US government. Like they they're like, You have too much money, you right. you're gonna have to and pay taxes on this. You wouldn't want to keep a billion dollars in a bank either when they're totally protected by, what, $250,000? Yeah, no. So yeah. you're going to invest it in, in many yeah. companies, real estate. You're going to invest that offshore in other countries. And so Panama. You, pa- Panama. You, you're going to distribute that money in many different things, but that's going to take away your time. So that's why I say it starts controlling you. It oh. starts controlling your time. Okay, okay. So it's going to take up time. Okay. Even if you hire people to manage some of that money, it will you have to meet with those people at least every so often to see if make sure they didn't take your money and then you'll be worrying about you know are they stealing from me or can they trust them you're gonna have to hire you know one person to track another person that they don't even see each other I mean there's ways of managing stuff like that that you know, okay, if somebody's, somebody's looking at the books for, for the, somebody see, else that's already looking at the books, and they don't know each other, and they don't see each other. Right, right, right. That sounds like some Scarface stuff right there. No. Everybody managing, looking, taking... I mean, because you have to. 
you have to uh, unless if you're going to trust somebody 100 percent, pretty soon that you know a little here a little there and mm. it happens all the time i've trusted family and with money and uh, mm, yeah. i think the only person you could trust your with money is yourself because it's your money you know you, you would probably trust your wife and your kids but the further outside of the family you go you never yeah. know because yeah. i'm saying i knew somebody that well they weren't married yet you know that you know uh, they they you know people get married and the wife starts taking the money and see, see, see. she blows it so i think if you if it's your money you should always have a little bit uh interest in it my wife thinks i'm a control freak but you know because what if she's going to start planning to go with Sa sancho that's and, true uh, or she's enjoying it with sancho that's true and well she's happy well she's well yeah she's i guess that money makes her happy how much how much was that would that <laughs> amount be well i don't know it depends on where did she get sancho she get him from that's the hood or she, well, get he him should from be the one paying for the stuff so no she's gonna be the sugar mama oh no hey, nice it's, it's my money so she's gonna be the sugar mama nice okay what time's the swinger party <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I think I so, so to me, it's where you're comfortable enough, and you don't have to worry for the key things in your life. See, I think for me, just looking at it and from experience, I think a number attached to it. I think like seventy-five, eighty a year. Seventy-five to eighty a with year. family. Thousand. Uh, uh huh. With family, I think it's too little. You said no, no bills, right? Well, I mean, you still have bills. I mean, you have a house. You always have property taxes here in California. They're paid for. You always have utilities. You always have gas for your car, especially See. now. Gas is coming almost ten dollars a gallon. Jesus. Um, yeah. So I mean, you, you always have needs for some money. But he's not far off of that ninety-five thousand. Yeah. And I, that's just me. I think that ninety thousand, a hundred thousand, will give you a decent See. lifestyle. It won't give you a lot of luxuries, but it will give you a roof in the house. Now, do you have insurance or no insurance? For or do you have to buy your own insurance with that ninety-five thousand or ninety? What kind of insurance? Like health insurance. No, that, that's sort of somebody else paying for it. Employment. Okay. Yeah, then I think you, you could live real comfortable. Yeah. Because, you know, I always believe you got to have be covered health insurance, no matter what. Either you get yeah. it on your own, you buy it through your company or whatever, you know, employer because one illness could ruin you financially if you don't have that medical insurance right. you know when one day in icu no insurance that's go, you know go fund me no? yeah i mean you hear the stories about you know a hundred dollars for an aspirin so mm -hmm. unless you live in canada or where medical is free but uh, uh i don't know i, I it's kind of an open question, you know. It, it's I think for everybody it will be different. Yeah. I, th I think to live comfortable. Because I've, I've known people that make thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 and they're happy. And they make it work, right? And they make and it they work, they're happy. Yeah. You know, they have two, three kids, they eat frijoles every day and they're happy. See, I think it's whatever you make, what makes you happy. And how you can manage it too. Manage it. Porque I said 20000 true, I'd be happy. But then you're spending twenty five, like, that's a lot of stress. Too much stress. I don't know what he's spending it on. Well, you know, people spend it on stupid things. Yeah. I know people who made money and they go and get new furniture every month, the whole house. Like that. Really? Do you really need that? Does that really bring you satisfaction? I think to, you're trying to. <laughs> the retail therapy is what's helping on that. Yeah, I think. Just yeah. shopping. Shopping, 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 yeah. So pe people, it is therapy. Sheesh. Well, that's matter. I think. Uh, yeah. So for you, it's ninety thousand. For me, it's yeah. it's somewhere around there. I think you know where where it, all the bills, a little bit of travel. I think yeah, you could live comfortably yeah. with that. I don't travel far, so yeah. I mean, yeah. you can make some nice travels, yeah. you know, road trips, camping. You yeah. don't need a lot of money I love for camping. that. Go to South America, anywhere and across the borders. With my trailer in the quads. Yeah. Future. What about you, Max? What do you think would be your idea? Um. Probably between the two of you, where it's so, healthcare is taken care of, see. you know, maybe enjoy a little more luxuries, maybe bump that up another <laughs> 20,000. <000. laughs> so, you, because uh, you had said you wanted a private plane. Oh, well, if I could, but I don't, I don't. Would that make you happy, though? 
I don't know if fine private would because you'd be lonely. I yeah. think if it does get lonely at the top. I mean, especially you're spending a lot unless of hours. I have a lot of money that like worst case I can have friends but that are you they pay really their your salary friends, so they don't have to go to work. Are they really your friends though? At that point I don't know. You you won't know. I mean when you get to that type of money, I mean people hang out with you because right. You know, you're treating you them to things. You could, you're you're paying for the booze. You're you're paying the entourage. And yeah. does that re- to, do you really want that? I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want that. And I think I've experienced that before when I was younger. No more. You got to cut that. You got an entourage. I had a little entourage. Yeah. And they you paid for everything. <sighs> Sometimes. And once you stop, they say, "Oh, we can't go." Well, you don't see anybody behind me yeah. anymore, so I don't know where they're at. Yeah, and that's what it is. They yeah. don't like, oh. I, yeah, I I think. That's probably the the worry or the fear that Jeff Bezos and and those guys have. Where, or do you think they get to the point? Fuck it, I don't give a shit. I'm just gonna do what I need to want to do and do it. That's true, because you have enough money that who cares what people say? The next generation will be fine for years. Yeah. You know, you. I I think somebody equated if you do for every single dollar, you compare that to one second. Right. So from like a billion seconds, how long is that? That's, that's like 10 years or five years. So it's like that's how much money actually sits there in the – maybe not in the bank. but Wherever the, he has it, yeah. Where you have it. So it's like I think even if he wants to spend – there's only so much you could spend a, a day too. Well, yeah. yeah. You could buy, you know, stupid things, art, you know, cars. <laughs> Wives. That's true. Houses. Middle East. Middle East. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll never uh, we'll never have the right answer, right? I think. Be- but then I see people who are making good money, and they want more and more, and, and, more, and they're yeah. struggling. I-, I think the struggle part. I think it's you a, get rid of the struggle, you you won't be happy. You'll be happy. It's got to be the management part, right? Like money management. Manage management. Being able to. Um, Balance all your stuff, mm-hmm. take care of it. Yeah, because you, you could be making a million dollars a year and you could be struggling and you will be miserable because yeah. you're living check to check. Yeah. I think if you manage it to where enough that you don't have to struggle and you're like comfortable with that, I think that will make you happy because then you'll be happy with your relationships that you have around you. You'll be happy with the job that you're mm-hmm. doing and you feel productive. Yeah. All right, I think for myself, I could see where you have the balance because it's like if I'm working too much and like, you know, I'm making a whole bunch of money, but I missed the birth of my kids, and I don't well, even know the kids. Uh, what's the you, point? You can't take that back. Yeah, you missed that one important event from your kid. You'll never get it back. That's true. That's one thing money can never do: buy you time. All right. What well, can it? I don't think so. Not yet. Next episode. No, a time, time <laughs> machine. Let's get a time machine. Oh man. You know, but yeah, I think it's independent of, of each person and <clears throat> their situations, their finances, and how they manage the money. Yeah, because I know people who are live, you know, decent jobs all their lives, and they're happy with that, and they're content. Yeah. yeah. At the time of the retirement, and they died happy. Yeah. You know, but then I met people who are never happy, and you know how much money they make. Masi, 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 and just like. Perros. I don't know. <laughs> but do you think like uh, El Chapo is happy? Not, uh, I mean, not, he made, not anymore. Not well, anymore. he made a lot of money. His freedom's taken away. Well, that's, <coughs> yeah, I don't know if he's happy anymore. Yeah. Well, actually, adding to that, like, up to a certain amount, you can't go anywhere. Yeah. You need security. You need. Yeah, that's why I say if you have too much money, you start needing an entourage of security. And I personally wouldn't want that lifestyle. You get recognized. Yeah. The, you go to a restaurant, they expect a huge mm-hmm. tip or they. they yeah. You know, are they gonna post you on social media? Yeah. You don't tip. You say you go to restaurants where you don't have to tip. Hey, I said that one time because they give me bad service. It doesn't mean I don't always. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I don't know, man. But I do tip. Tipping is uh It's it's almost like becoming president. Like, would you want to become president? You have the power and you have the the recognition, but you can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. Right. I, especially after you leave, you're still... Yeah, you have Secret Service following you until... Uh, even the restroom. Even yeah. the restroom, you can't... Some people know. like that type of stuff, you know. But. I, I think you got to balance... There's a reason why they do it, I think. One is probably they figure that the bad part of it 
is not as bad as the good that they they want to really do. Mm. I think that's why they get into it, or the power that they want. Yeah, one of yeah. the two. I don't know. I think there's. I, I don't wouldn't want that to be president. Well, yeah, I would. You know, yeah, I will you, run for president. Yeah, you can run. Yeah, I'll vote for you. I need money though. I need a lot of money. I'll, I'll vote for you. Is all I said. Just one vote. Okay, got one vote. Maybe two. Two, maybe three. Three. That's it. Not enough, man. At least you'll be on the ballot, man. Yeah. You and Mickey Mouse was. Because I want to fly an Air Force One. <laughs> I want to be the pilot. <laughs> Let me fly this motherfucker. Right? Yes. Yeah. Give me the fucking keys. Captain. Yeah. Does this button really know? <laughs> Drop a nuke. A nuke. No. Oh, man. You can come out and run for president one day and like... Do it. Well, yeah. Maybe down the line. All right. Get into politics. Like, politics is a whole different lifestyle, man. You going to donate your money, though? Or are you going to keep it? Some people like they're like, oh, don't pay me. And they set stuff aside. Oh, if I would um, have a lot of money? If you were the president. If I was the president? You're going to take your salary? Or I'll take my salary. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Hey, you, you, you said it's going to pay that much? I'm going to take it. <laughs> now, what am I going to do with that? It's a whole different story. I might give it to my charity or give it do something. Upgrade Air Force One? Put some no, nice you, can't, you can't upgrade or get a new plane. That goes to the next president. Mm, so you can't put the... So no rims. You can't put the rims in the Air Force One. No tinted windows? Well, it already has tinted windows. Or oh, it has no windows. Double tinted windows? I don't know. All right. Yeah. Next thing. Know. Pimp out the house. <laughs> bueno, I think, uh, I think this is a good topic, but uh, and it, it varies from everybody, and uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That was a good one. Cool. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, send us the emails. I think that's it, yeah. That's it. And we'll see you soon. See you next week. If you want to hear more stories like this, please click the like button and subscribe. Find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.